The whole reason cine lifters like this exist is to carry large cinema grade cameras, something like this, and whiz them around and capture dramatic drone footage. And this is very different from using heavy lift drones like DJI and Freefly Systems Alta. They both carry similar high-end cameras, but they're designed to capture smooth cinematic footage that we're all used to seeing on TV and Hollywood films. Now, cine lifters carry the same type of camera, but give you all the freestyle aerial maneuvers like you get with regular FPV acro quads, inverted flight, roll, spin, split S, and so on. So, cine lifters have to be large and powerful to carry these large and very expensive payloads, as well as being very agile and fast. And the choice of flight controller firmware is crucial to making this work in the high stress and massive cost world of filmmaking. So, here's my top five reasons why you should choose iNav for your cine lifter builds. Hello, and welcome to the Worldly Bloke channel. This is YouTube, you know what to do. In 2022, you've mostly got three choices of flight controller firmware for your cine lifter. Betaflight has been around for years and gives you fantastic acro performance. And it's one of the main choices if you want to do freestyle acro or racing. And I'm pretty sure it's got the most active developers contributing to the code base. For a cine lifter, we want this type of performance, but Betaflight doesn't provide great support for GPS and compass. So you don't get any position or altitude hold. But you do get rescue mode, which is a sort of crude form of return to home. Arduino Pilot is a very mature and full feature flight control firmware with full support for pretty much any sensor that you care to throw at it. And it's got fantastic support for GPS and compass. So you get all the position and altitude hold based stuff, including very full featured automated waypoint missions, point of interest, gimbal control, and so on. But what you don't get is any sort of acro flying. If you want to build a DJI style drone, Arduino Pilot is what you need. Plus, it's great for aircraft, wings, cars, boats, tanks, all sorts. Now, iNav has the acro performance of Betaflight and awesome GPS and compass support for position and altitude hold and rock solid return to home, similar to Arduino Pilot. It's also the firmware of choice for many aircraft and wing builders, as well as multi-rotors. And I can tell you from experience, iNav works extremely well with large multi-rotors in all sorts of configurations. So, here's my top five reasons to use iNav for your cine lifter builds. Mounted at the heart of the flight controller board, buried down in here, is a multi-axis gyro. And its job is to measure how the drone is moving, how fast and in what direction. The flight controller PID firmware uses the data from the gyro to decide how to keep it in the air and follow whatever you've demanded on the sticks and what you want it to do. The motors and the props generate mechanical noise as they're spinning around and these vibrations get carried through the arms, through the frame, onto the flight controller board and then onto the gyro. And these vibrations effectively contaminate the good clean movement data the gyro is getting and it sends the flight controller firmware bonkers if it's allowed to get there. It's basically a load of unwanted, mainly mechanical noise, some static and some dynamic. Now all flight controller firmware uses digital filters to get rid of this noise and by definition cine lifters need to be large to carry big cinema cameras. They need bigger motors with more torque and bigger props and the motors are on the end of much longer arms. It's like being on the end of a very long lever. And the vibrations are generally lower frequency because cine lifters use large, slower turning props and motors compared to something like a five inch quad. Now, beta flight, noise filtering and RPM filtering work really well on smaller quads, 
but the INAV Unicorn Matrix filter does a much, much better job with these larger multi-rotors. So what you get on your cine lifters with INAV is really smooth flight performance that's just much easier to tune and it feels so much nicer. And that's just what you need for smooth video footage. Having the ability to hover and hold position and altitude is common with DJI type drones. And you'd think it would be of no value for FPV quads or multi-rotors. And in normal freestyle or racing, I'd agree. But if you're videoing some action and waiting for things to start, or there's another take needed, being able to hold your position hands-free is a massive boon. And if you need to talk to somebody, you don't need to land. Just switch to position hold, lift your goggles up, and you can chat away. And you can rely on iNav to hold the cine lifter in position, just like a DJI drone. And I've also found that some slow following shots are much easier with altitude hold set. It stops me throttle pumping with my left hand. Now, all this good stuff is very dependent on how good your GPS and magnetometer are and how well they're mounted. And I've got another video that explains the issues and the correct way to mount things so everything works as it should and you can rely on it. INAV supports LiDAR and optical flow sensors like this simple Matek one that I've got mounted on my AOS 7. This measures the distance above the ground and the movement across the ground without the need for GPS. So you can hover your cine lifter inside a building where there's no GPS signal and it will stay glued to the spot without you having to do anything. And INAV has also got surface mode which allows the LiDAR sensor to keep your cine lifter a fixed distance above the ground without relying on the barometer to measure altitude. It does terrain following as well. This only works at low level and is a modifier for altitude hold, but it's a useful feature to have if you need it. Betaflight has rescue mode and INAV has return to home. Rescue mode, in my experience, is very patchy and mostly unreliable. It doesn't really matter for smallish FPV quads because it gets you out of trouble if things go wrong with the RC link. On the other hand, return to home on iNav is absolutely rock solid and you can configure it in lots of ways to suit what you need. The return altitude, the ascent and descent rate, speed and so on. Now if you check out my other video where I give iNav the ultimate brutal test and simply switch the transmitter off to simulate an RC link failure, it does exactly what it's supposed to do and it lands within about half a meter of where I took off. Failsafe is a mode triggered when the flight controller detects the RC transmitter signal has disappeared. Betaflight gives you the option to hover, drop or return to home using rescue mode. Drop has been the most common setting to stop the quad simply flying away into the distance never to be seen again. It just turns the motors off and it drops to the ground. And because these smaller quads are very tough, they'll survive a crash into the ground without too much damage. You can set rescue mode, but as I've said before, it's not that reliable at the moment. Now, if you're flying a large, expensive cine lifter, carrying a large expensive camera, and this is small by comparison, the last thing you want is it smacking into the ground when it loses its RC signal. There's just too much money at stake. Because return to home on iNav is completely dependable if the drone is built right and everything's configured right, your expensive camera and cine lifter will just return to home unscathed if you get an RC link failure. And the same is true if the battery gets low or you lose orientation or get into any sort of trouble. Just switch on, return to home. I certainly won't risk carrying my expensive Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera on anything that's not running iNav. And don't just take my word for it. Check out Catalyst Machine Works who make some of the best and biggest commercial cine lifters in all sorts of configurations. 
These are used on lots of very high-end productions in Hollywood films. And guess what? They're very expensive and they mostly use iNav. And I desperately want one. Also, check out Pavel's channel. He's an iNav moderator and developer and a huge advocate of using iNav on everything, especially these large multi-rotors. And I'll leave links in the description where you can find both of them. As always, thanks for watching. And if you found this helpful, why not subscribe or maybe buy me a coffee to support the channel. And I'll see you next time.